Right, so this is making a card model of the phone stand. This time I've got some corrugated cardboard. So it's two thin layers of card with the little corrugations, the little zigzags going between them, which makes for very lightweight yet strong board. Um, this is some old boxes I've just cut up at home. If I was at school, I would be using a craft knife to cut it with, and because the craft knife is very sharp, I'd be using the safety ruler that's got the zigzag, so it's got a gutter. So I can put in my fingers in the gutter, and when I run the craft knife along the edge of the ruler, it has to run up the slope before it can get to my fingers, so I'm less likely to cut my fingers off. If you use a normal ruler, um, I mean, if you're using a plastic ruler, then sometimes the knife cuts into the plastic ruler, but if you're using a thin ruler like this, it's very easy for the knife to move, and if you've got a sharp craft knife, it will cut your fingers before you know. Um, the craft knife has got the sharp blade cutting bit there, and then the zag bit, the angled bit, is the back of it, and most of them have got serrations so you can put your finger on to grip there. Uh, the number of times I get students in school trying to use it that way around, cutting their fingers. So do make, be very, very careful if you're using a craft knife. Um, because I'm at home, um, I've only got my table to cut on, and if we were at school, I'd have a cutting mat down. It's a rubbery mat that protects the table and gives a little bit of resistance to the blade. Um, because I'm at home, I'm not going to use that. So instead, I'm going to rely on a sharp pair of scissors. Now, two decisions you've got to make when you're cutting the card. The first one is the amount of support that the phone gets at the front when it's sitting on the stand. So how far out do you want the cardboard sticking to support the phone? The second one is how much card is sticking down sticking down when you want it sitting on the table. So what angle do you want this one at to support it? And the longer the leg gets, the shorter it gets at the top. And if you get it too short, your phone is constantly going to fall off the back. So you've got decisions to make about how far out it sticks for the phone, how far down the leg sticks to get it going like that. OK? Now, from experience and using these at school, I've decided with my particular phone that I need a ledge of about 15 millimetres sticking out of the front of one to support my phone at the front and for the leg sticking down anywhere between 30 and 40, so I tend to go for 35. 30, 35. And I'm just writing those on the card so you've got the dimensions. Now, these lines need to go across the card at, four, at 90 degrees, perpendicular. So if you've got a tri-square or a set square, you can put your set square against the edge of the card line it up carefully, line it up with a pencil line, and you can use that to get a 90 degree line going across the card. If you haven't got a set square, then you're going to need to measure twice. So I've measured once at 35. I'll move it over to the other side and measure 35 at the other side. And now I've got two pencil lines I can draw between my two pencil lines. Now it looks like my card isn't cut out completely square, but never mind. Now, there is a thickness to this card. Um, I don't know which way is the better lighting, but if I put my card up against that line so it just about disappears, and then get my pencil and draw on the other side, there is my gap for my card and again I need to make the line parallel. Now normally I'd be using a tri-square at school so I'm just going to have to guess this but parallel and so that the card fits together when we come to cut it we want this a little bit narrower than the card. We can always cut it a little bit wider but if we cut it too wide the thing will end up loose. It's called a halving joint because we are going to cut halfway through the card. 
My card is 75 millimetres wide and we want half of 75. Um, if I do half of 70, that's 35, and half of 5 is 2.5, so that makes 37.5, and, and there we go, and I'm just going to cut away half of it. So I've shaded the bit I've cut away. If I do the same on my other piece of card, again, I can get the line just covered by the card. and make a little line on the other side. So that's the thickness of my card. Now again, I want to keep those lines parallel. So I'm going to have to do it by eye, as I haven't got a tri-square. And the same as the other piece, I want the line, two lines, a little bit narrower than the thickness of the card. It's a halving joint. So I want to go halfway through. Um, on my steel ruler, it actually measures half a millimetre. So that's why I'm using it on one particular side. 35, 36, 37 and a half would be there. And again, I can shade to the bit I'm going to cut out. Now, if I was at school, this is the time where I'd have my cutting mat down. I'd be using my safety rule and my craft knife and I would be cutting away from the end towards the open end. So that I'm always, if I miss and cut too far, I'm cutting into nothing. And I would be cutting those two bits like that. Um, I've no cutting mat, and this craft, no cutting mat. So instead, like you're probably going to have to do at home, I'm going to use a pair of scissors to cut down the sides, slots. You need to be a fairly sharp pair of scissors. And the difficulty here is, we're cutting towards the bit where we want to stop. So we need to be accurate. Because it's very easy to cut too far. And then I can just cut down the other one. The lighting's not brilliant, is it? OK. Um, I end up with a curly bit of card. So if I pull that up, if I pull it up, I can get my scissors and just slip that off. And what you want to do is check that it just slides in. Tight, but not so tight that it doesn't go in. Um, not so loose so it wobbles. And then I've got this one to do. So same thing. And it's just carefully cutting halfway across. And if you make a mistake with the thickness, the trick is to make it thinner first time through. Little loop of card, again, I can just get my scissors and snip that off. Do watch your fingers. So now I've got my two halving joints, and I can slot the two pieces of card together to make my stand. Some of you may be cutting holes through. I don't know what your scissors look like, but mine have got a sharp point. I can push through and then use the scissors to cut round. It's not going to be very easy. Um, the alternative is to get some paper, cut the paper out, the, sh side, the shape of the hole, and stick it on. And so the paper would represent the hole. So you can have a shape, or maybe you could glue on a piece of paper to represent the hole. So this piece of paper represents the hole where you can put your finger through. So there's my shape to represent. That was supposed to be an Apple logo, but I'm not very good at that. And that was my shape to represent the charging plug socket where the charging lead can come through. And this is where you can test it. So you can put your phone on and see whether it actually stands up OK. So phone would be standing on the card, pencil represents the table, and that's what it would look like. Unfortunately, the card is not as rigid as the plywood, so you're not going to be able to stand it on a table, it's going to flop down. If you're taking a photograph, 
you might be able to get somebody else to hold it, somebody else to hold it while you photograph it to show what it looks like.